Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about formal charge. A formal charge is an electron bookkeeping method where what we're doing, in essence, is keeping track of each atom's share of the electrons in the molecule compared to what it brought into the molecule itself. So the objectives for this podcast are to review the rules that we use to assign formal charges. It's a very simple calculation. We'll do some practice problems where we apply the rules to actually assign formal charges to several different chemical species. And then we're going to look at some problems that involve the most important application of formal charge, which is selecting the most appropriate or best structure from a set of non-equivalent Lewis structures for a given molecule. For calculating formal charge, the first thing you should always do is make sure you have a correct Lewis structure. Without that, it makes it very hard to figure out the bonding pattern. So you always start with the Lewis diagram. And then for typically each atom in the molecule, you'll do each atom by itself, you're going to calculate its formal charge. You start by looking at the number of valence electrons that that atom brought to the, the molecule. And remember, you can determine the valence electron for any element by using either the group number or the group number minus 10 for main block elements. And then you're going to subtract out the number of lone pair electrons. And then you're going to subtract out the number of bonds attached to whatever atom you're working on. So these calculations are actually very, very simple. I do want to point out that the sum of the formal charges must add up to the overall charge of the species. If it's a neutral molecule, they should add up to zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, it should add up to the overall charge of the polyatomic ion. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems. The first structure I'd like to do is dioxygen difluoride, which has the skeleton structure FOOF. I guess you can call it the FOOF molecule if you want to. Now we have two oxygen atoms, each contributing six valence electrons, and we have two fluorine atoms, each contributing seven valence electrons, which gives us a total of 26 valence electrons in this molecule. Let's put them into the structure. We have two, four, six valence electrons accounted for by the, the single bonds. We can put in our lone pairs around all of the atoms to make sure everyone has a stable octet. And I think if we count that, we'll have all 26 electrons. Now you'll notice the two oxygens have the same kind of thing going on. They both have two lone pairs and two bonds. And the two fluorines each have the same kind of thing going on. They each have three lone pairs and one bond. So we can go ahead and just start calculating formal charges. So for oxygen, oxygen is a group 16 element. It starts with six valence electrons. And then we need to subtract out the numbers of lone pair electrons. And you'll notice there are two lone pairs on each oxygen, which gives us four lone pair electrons. And then we need to subtract out the number of bonds. And there are two bonds on each oxygen. So six minus four minus two is zero. The formal charges for each oxygen is zero. Let's go and do the same thing for the fluorine. Now fluorine is a group 17 element. It's a halogen. Those all have seven valence electrons. Then we're going to subtract out the number of lone pair electrons. And you'll notice that each fluorine has three lone pairs. So that's six lone pair electrons. And then we need to subtract out the number of bonds. And each fluorine has one bond. And seven minus six minus one is zero. So the formal charges for the fluorines are also zero. And we can just show these as numbers above the atoms. And you'll notice the it is a neutral molecule and the sum of the formal charges is zero. So that's cell consistent. That's what we want. Let's go and look at the cyanate ion, which is our next practice problem. Now in the cyanate ion, it does have the skeleton structure of OCN. 
let's count our valence electrons. We have six from the oxygen, four from the carbon, five from the nitrogen, and one because of that negative charge. So that gives us a total of 16 valence electrons. Now this structure, I think, is not going to work with all single bonds. To make this work, we're going to need triple bonds. So we'll put in all of our lone pair electrons. Everyone's got a stable octet. We have an overall minus one charge. So let's calculate this. Again, we want to do oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. All right, for oxygen, well, we did this before. We know that it has six valence electrons. The oxygen in the cyanate ion has six lone pair electrons, and it has one bond. Well, six minus six minus one is minus one. Let's do the same thing for the carbon. Carbon brings four valence electrons to the molecule. It has no lone pair electrons. It has four bonds attached to it. Four minus zero minus four is zero. So the formal charge of carbon is zero. For the nitrogen, it brought five valence electrons to the molecule. It has two lone pair electrons and three bonds. Five minus two minus three equals zero. So the formal charge of the nitrogen is zero. Now the sum of the formal charges here, these add up to minus one, which is the overall charge of the molecule, and so uh, we are self-consistent. Great. Now if you have a set of non-equivalent structures and you are asked to use formal charge to compare them or evaluate them, there are two guidelines. One is that the best Lewis structures have formal charges as close to zero as possible. All right. So your preferred structure will have the lowest formal charges, as close to zero as you can get. The other thing is that your best Lewis structures will have negative formal charges on electronegative atoms. And so this is, these are the two pieces of information we would use to evaluate structures. Let's go and look at a problem where we're asked to do this. It asks, which of these three forms is likely to be most important? And we're just using formal charge arguments here. So what we need to do is calculate the formal charges for all these N's and O's. All right, so let's start. I'm going to number them because they're not all doing the same thing. so we can keep track of them. We're going to just do these calculations really, really quickly. All right, so for nitrogen number one, we have five valence electrons, we have two lone pair electrons, we have three bonds, so the formal charge of nitrogen one is zero. The formal charge of nitrogen two is five minus three minus zero. Oops, that's supposed to be a three, five bond, three bond, Oh, I messed that up. Sorry. Five minus zero lone pair electrons minus four. So nitrogen number two has a formal charge of plus one. And nitrogen number three for the, I'm sorry, it's oxygen, atom number three, has six valence electrons minus six lone pair electrons minus one bond equals minus one. All right. All right. Let's look at the fourth atom, the nitrogen, starts with five valence electrons. It has six lone pair electrons and one bond. So atom number four has a formal charge of minus one. Atom number five, which is also a nitrogen, five valence electrons minus four bonds minus zero lone pair electrons equals plus one. And the oxygen is, would be six minus two minus three would be plus one. Did I make a mistake there? Something seems funny. And let's look at number seven. Five minus four minus two equals minus one. For nitrogen eight, be five minus zero minus four equals plus one. 
And for the oxygen, which is double bonded, we have 6 minus 4 minus 2 equals 0. I think I made a mistake here in the central one. Let's see if I can figure it out. If we look at the third structure, right, it's got a negative formal charge on a nitrogen. But this molecule has an oxygen in it, which is much more electronegative. It has definitely a higher electronegativity. So this is probably not the optimal structure. If we look at the middle structure, I still think I made a mistake here. Oh, this is minus 2. That's what I did. Sorry, I can't add, apparently minus 2. <laughs> um, that's better. All right. I have a negative formal charge on the nitrogen and a positive formal charge on the oxygen. All right. I also have formal charges that are way away from 0. Um, if we look at the first structure, I had a 0 on the first nitrogen and a plus 1 on the second nitrogen. The negative charge is on the more electronegative oxygen. So I'm going to conclude that this first structure here Structure one is the most important. Because it's got low low formal charges close to zero. And the negative formal charge is on the oxygen, which is the most electronegative element.